Hello students, in today's lesson we will learn about pressure in liquids. But before that, let's discuss about the properties of liquid. Students, liquid have intermolecular spaces. The molecules of liquid have intermolecular spaces between them and are therefore not in a fixed position and can easily move around. Liquids have fluidity and not rigidity. Fluidity means that they have the ability to flow. Liquids can flow from a higher to a lower level. Liquids take the shape of the container. Liquids do not have a definite shape. They take the shape of the container or vessel they are placed in. So liquids do not have a definite shape but do have a definite volume. Liquids cannot be compressed easily. Compressing something means to apply pressure to reduce the volume. Liquids are hard to compress because the molecules are very close to each other. So it is very hard to put pressure and bring the molecules even more closer. So liquids cannot be compressed easily. Now students, let's discuss some activities to learn about the pressure in liquids. The first activity shows that pressure in a liquid increases with depth. Take an empty container and make a few holes in it. At different levels, plug the holes with plasticine. Fill the can completely with water and then remove the plasticine from each hole. What do you observe? You will observe that the pressure with which the water flows out increases according to the depth of the hole under the water surface. At the top surface, you can see that the water flows out with low pressure. As we come down, the water flows out with medium pressure. And at the depth, the water flows out with high pressure. This activity shows that pressure in liquid increases with depth. Now the second activity shows that pressure at the same depth in a liquid is same in all directions. Take an empty tin can and make several row holes round the tin can. Make sure that the holes are at the same size and at the same height. Plug the holes with plasticine and fill the tin with water. Remove the plasticine from each hole. What do you observe? You will find that the water flows out of these holes with equal pressure. This activity proves that at the same depth, the pressure in the liquid is same in all directions. Liquids exert lateral pressure. Lateral pressure means the pressure of the liquid on the sides of the container. Take a tube having an opening in its side. Cover the opening with a balloon. Now pour water in the tube. You will notice that the balloon bulges outward. Add more water and the balloon bulges more. This activity shows that liquids exert pressure not only at the base of the container but also on the walls of the container. This sideways pressure is called lateral pressure. Liquids seek their own level. Pour some water into any one arm of a set of communicating vessels of different shapes and sizes connected at their base. The water will flow from the vessel into any other vessel until the pressure in each vessel is equalized and the water stands at the same height in each vessel. The water level in each vessel will be the same irrespective of the size and shape of the vessel. This activity shows 
that liquids tend to seek or find its own level. Now students, here is a picture showing a French mathematician and a physicist known as Blaise Pascal. The Pascal law was invented by Blaise Pascal. The law deals with the transmission of pressure from one point in a stationary liquid to another. Now here is a container filled with water and it is enclosed by a piston. Now as pressure is applied on the piston, the pressure inside the fluid is transmitted equally in all directions throughout the fluid. So the law may be stated as when pressure is applied to an enclosed fluid, it is transmitted equally in all directions throughout the fluid. Now students, let's study the application of Pascal's law. The hydraulic brake system uses the Pascal principle. Hydraulic brakes are used in automobiles such as cars, trucks, etc. When a heavy vehicle is moving with a high speed, a large amount of force is required to stop it within a required distance. For this purpose, the hydraulic brake system is used. The hydraulic brake system consists of a master cylinder and a brake cylinder. Filled with brake oil, the two cylinders are provided with oil-tight pistons. A force is applied by the foot on the brake pedal, which transfers this force to the piston inside the master cylinder. This exerts a pressure on the brake oil. The pressure is transmitted into the tube to the oil in the brake cylinder. The undiminished pressure forces the piston in each brake cylinder to act on the brake shoe attached to the rim of the wheel. The resulting friction stops the wheel from rotating. When the pressure on the brake pedal is released, the spring which connects the two brake shoe contract and pulls them away from the rotor. The wheel is thus free to rotate again.